Um, our special guest this morning is virtuoso saxophonist Yolanda Brown. is the double MOBA award winner. She broke into the top ten jazz and blues charts with her 2012 debut album, April Showers, May Flowers. Last Friday, she released a follow-up, Love, Politics, War. What's, what's the vibe on that, then? It's so quite heavy, actually. It is. Well, it wasn't meant to be. It, I've now created my own genre. It's called posh <laughs> reggae. <laughs> and it's a mix of, yeah. I love it. Uh, don't knock it till you try it. And uh, it's a mix of reggae, jazz, and soul. I play the saxophone, so it's based in jazz. Right. Um, but the fastest selling single on the album, Tokyo Sunset from April Showers, May Flowers, just led me down this path of na my natural rhythm. Mm -hmm. And um, love politics war is something that we all go through love of family, friends, romantic love, um, politics, family politics, office politics, and then the <sighs> internal battles and sort of conflicts that we may have. And then when writing the album, then you realise there's a global yeah, meaning yeah. to this as well, you know. Love, the amazing love that we've seen, even in this past week with the, with the towers and everything. You've really tapped into something there, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, it's have? something we all go through, and it's something that we should actually try to keep a good balance of. Yeah. If we have love, good politics, then there'll be no war, and, you know, it's something because to whatever, always have in mind. Because whatever you think about the, the current situation politically, the result of the election, whichever way people voted, it's really sucked people into the political oh, life yes. again, isn't it? I mean, no I was choice. despairing of young people. They yes. just didn't seem interested in politics. Yes. I mean, I was talking to my own children, and it's quite hard sometimes to get them to engage, but now they now. are fully engaged. Very yeah. much so. You can't, you can't turn anywhere without having to without have that, taking the political that conversation, yeah, yes, yeah. and really having to take a stand and think, what do I think about it? Mm. And when you're making those political decisions, you have to almost do it with love. How does it affect me? How would Brexit affect my, my friend who lives here and is from Spain, but her family is here yeah. and she's grown up here? How does it affect people? And you have to work with love. In other words, we've, we've, we've connected. Yes. But we're, we're yes. not properly connected with what's Very going on out there. Very much so. Which is terribly confused at the moment, but I've, I've got a good feeling that actually out of all of this confusion yep. is going to come good. I think, I think because so. Because people are thinking about how we live and the importance of the decisions I we make. I think so. Yes. I won't get too positive yes, about we're it. Yes, we're going deep. We're going deep. No, no. Um, <laughs> I call you a virtuoso, and, I, and I, um, I always struggle not to giggle when I use that word because of that fantastic line in the classic film, Some Like It Hot, mm. when the woman band leader of the all-girl band says when they've done a number at the Miami Hotel and all the guys' tongues are hanging out, because they're all, it's Marilyn Monroe, you know, they're all gorgeous. Yes. And she says at the end, so, um, she's wrapping it up, that's all, folks, for tonight. I just want to remind you, Dad is out there, that every member of my girl band here is a virtuoso, and I intend to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's just a great line. Best, yeah, I won't be called that film. ever again. <laughs> 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 Show us your, your saxophone, because yes. it's, it's a thing of the beauty. Um, oh, thank now, you. what's your yes. normal saxophone that you normally play? So, I, I play all three. I play the tenor wow. sax. Oh, oh. Isn't it lovely? Oh, always oh, gets wow. the compliments. I did try to dress up today, but I didn't get that effect. Um, <laughs> I just love, I love yes. this, this inlay work here. Definitely, and it's uh, got a black lacquer. It's all brass, and then I love the black lacquer. It gives it a very warm tone. Um, I do play the tenor saxophone mostly, mm -hmm. but in writing this new album, I found that I was playing the alto more. It has... Yeah, 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 go ahead. Thank you. Whoa, 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 I, I, I use, I, I'll be sorry, sorry when this I Friday. That, be careful. Do you, yes, <laughs> does your soul shrivel a little bit when somebody else no, takes your You know, sax? it's hardy stuff. It looks so ornate and very beautiful and pretty, beautiful. but it's very, very strong. And, um, What's it made of? It's made of brass. Brass. All brass. Solid yes, brass. Solid brass. That's and in right. including all the taps and everything? Including all the keys, all the keys and yeah. then we have some leather work inside for the pads, which helps to seal right. the air in. She used to play the sax. I did. Oh, she did. Yeah, she I did. mean, I'm absolutely mortified that you say that. You know, I played the sax incredibly badly. In fact, the first audition I ever went to was yes. for Last of the Blonde Bombshells with Judy Dench. And I said, I was excited with my first audition. I said, I can, I, I can play the saxophone. I'll bring my saxophone. Yes. And I played something, and the casting director said, Oh, feel free, warm up. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <I> was <it."> <laughs> <laughs> That was, that was my best so, shot. Oh, we no. We've only got one sax <laughs> How long did you learn for? About a couple of years? Yeah, no, it was really bad. Like, really, really bad. No, no talent. Zero. Okay. Not I mean, it. It, it is famously a difficult instrument to master. Why? What, 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 what are the difficulties of playing the saxophone? You know what? I, um, fantastically enough, we did a wonderful campaign called a pledge campaign for this, this oh, album. What campaign? A pledge campaign. Pledge so campaign. people could pledge and have wonderful experiences with your tune, including racing and all the rest of it. And one of them was to have a one on one saxophone session. So I just fulfilled some of those. Mm -hmm. And some of them have never played the saxophone before. And by the end of an hour session, half of it was done chatting. Mm -hmm. They could play Mary Had a Little Lamb. And they, they could. So, I don't buy it that it's a hard so she instrument was just rubbish, to play. Basically. Oh, no, 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 you are great. But I think we're very caught up, and I work a lot with improvisation. I'm self taught on the instrument. And so for me, it's all about expression. It's not necessarily about reading the dots and making sure I get it right and in tempo. It's about expression. feeling, it's yeah. about playing what you feel. And I think once you get away from that and say, yeah. 
I'm, I'm not warming up, darling. This is just an improvised piece about, <laughs> this, about, about the situation we're in right now. And all of a sudden, music then becomes something that everyone can tap into. Well, I, I've oh. learnt the clarinet when I was at school. Uh -huh. And I loved the clarinet. Oh, I, 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 they, I tried the oboe, but I didn't like the oboe. It was a bit yes. reedy for me. But yes. the clarinet I loved, and that was one of the things I loved about it was improvising. Just at home, just, just fooling around. It was it, such that's fun. what it's about. That's yeah. what music should be about. Well, let's, let's have a listen to you now. This is a Yolanda on uh, a hackney barge blasting out <laughs> million, billion love. Who invented the saxophone? Where did it start? Yeah, it was Adolf Sax in the 1800s. Oh. Um, and it, didn't, it wasn't as intricate as this, mm. so it didn't have all the springs and, and intricacies, but the tone and sound of it is. And what, has was, been it, what was it introduced for? Classical music? To begin classical, with? yes, classical. classical. Um, I think there was a range between sort of the clarinets and then going over to the trumpets that wasn't being filled. So uh, the saxophone can, can do all of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and what drew you to it? I mean, obviously, you, you must remember the first time yes. you picked up a sax and put yes. it to your lips. How old yeah. were you and what was it that attracted you? I was uh, 13. I played the piano, the drums, the violin, sort of going... <laughs> uh, I mean, don't get away. We'll come to that. She's I see what's about something. to happen here. She's just <laughs> <laughs> um, the, <laughs> and the drums has gone through those and I really wanted to play an instrument that I could bring with me mm. you know I always had to find a piano or find a drum kit and um, oboe I was looking into the oboe actually and I found the saxophone it's such a soulful instrument um, something that you can just pick up and really feel and I didn't feel that on any of the other instruments so it became an extension of me it became yes. my voice yes. and a, a very therapeutic sort of thing for me to just play in my room and process my emotions it's not the only thing she can do. You can do a Rubik's Cube in, in what, three or four minutes? I can, listen, I, I had a fantastic interview with, um, with your researchers earlier. Yeah. And I could, you know, this is all my, well, my on, technique. Then. But, yes. there, is, there is a but. I have been working so hard on my album that the algorithms have left me. It literally is just maths. Uh, so, I, I mean, I can do about two levels now. Well, I've just started mine. Hand. There you go. No, you <laughs> didn't. You, you should give so me that one. Easy. I, should, I, must, I must tell a quick story about... Uh, we could have done that in an ad break and that would have made it look really good. Listen, um, uh, there, one of the reasons I'm here and the reasons I'm married to Judy and I have yes. children yes. and I've had the career I've had and all the rest of it is because of this. I was at Yorkshire Television mm -hmm. and uh, ITN called one day. They were short of an Anne Finally for the news at 10. You know, sure. Anne Finally. And they, I was a regional port reporter, but there was a, a Rubik's Cube conference at York University talking about the algorithms and stuff. Yeah. And they wanted me to go up there and do a funny piece with the, the dummy thing and all that, <laughs> just for the Anne Finally, so I did. And it went out that night on News at 10. And I was all pleased because I was on network television. I was about yeah. 25. And the head of news at Granada Television saw it. And he was happened to be looking for a new presenter. And he phoned me up and gave me a job the next day. I went across, met Judy, married her, had the kids. And if it wasn't for that, God, you know, uh, our lives turn on a dime, don't it they? Literally, they, literally, they literally, on a, on a, on a cube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK.